was showing earlier. Um, first is the app creates the payment. Um, then the user, the, yeah, the app creates the payment. The user approves the payment and actually submits the blockchain transaction. And then step three is the payment gets completed, which is sort of another round of confirmation to make sure that everyone is aware that the payment has been made and that the transaction has been executed on the blockchain. So all of our involved parties are uh, shown here again in a fancy, <laughs> more organized way. Um, and the, the step one is creating a payment and that is done from the app's front end um, by the app front end calling a local method that doesn't even need to involve the back end um, to let the Pi platform know that this user needs to pay XPy for some thing that they are trying to buy. So next step is the Pi platform responds saying, yep, I'm aware of what's going on. Here's a payment ID. And that payment ID will be the reference to this payment for the entire, um, for the, the rest of the entire process. Now, um, payment ID has to be recorded by the app backend. And as a way to prove that the app backend is aware of this payment ID and it isn't going missing, it has to, the app's backend has to send it again to the app platform to confirm that it's aware of this payment ID. We are assuming that um, this, if the payment ID reaches the app backend, there is a very high likelihood that it has been correctly recorded in the app's database. This could obviously always, uh, everything could always go wrong, um, but we're, uh, this, this, is, um, this is a mandatory step to at least know that it somehow reached the app backend and then it gets sent to the app platform through a process that is called payment approval now um the next step is payment completion oh, yeah the next step is payment completion and this is where the user flow becomes interactive this is where the user gets to either use face id or fingerprint or manually type their passphrase to sign the transaction the transaction gets sent to the blockchain uh, which is the first arrow starting from the person's face icon on the slide there is some interaction that is hidden under the hood between the pi platform and the blockchain in order to pick up this transaction and know that it is linked with a given payment id and that is all handled by the pi wallet and the platform and none of it is the responsibility of the developer now what happens is the buy platform is going to return the blockchain transaction id to the app's front end and this is all happening on the front end side um part of the reason being as we said earlier the user's passphrase never leaves their phone and never leaves their wallet app um for uh, sec obvious security reasons um so now the, the the transaction ID is returned to the app's front end and there is another round of sending it back through the back end in order to once again kind of prove that the transaction ID has been received and that there is a good chance the whatever goods will be delivered um, and so this transaction ID has to be sent somehow by the app's front end back to the app back end and the app back end has to send it again to the Pi platform through the process that we call server side completion. Now on the next slide, we are linking all of these concepts with um, technical terms that are used in our documentation and that are the actual function names and API endpoints that will have to be called in order to implement this. So number one to create the payment is an SDK method. SDK meaning the front-end JavaScript library that gets integrated into the app front-end. Um, and the app front-end calls a method that's called create payment. And create payment takes a few JavaScript callbacks. So kind of small methods that are used to handle events happening on the payment. 
and those two events are unready for server approval. And this is when we get the payment ID that we need to send back to our backend for the server side approval step. The um, REST API endpoint that is used for this purpose is payment slash payment ID slash approve. And then the whole part where the user interaction is needed is completely out of the developer's um, plate. And when we get to the next event that the developer needs to handle, which is unready for server completion, um, we this callback is called by the a platform with a DX ID that we then have to send to our backend as a developer and gets posted to the REST API endpoint called payment slash txid slash complete. That's it on the tech stuff or on the specific implementation details. Um, so I know we've thrown a lot of information at you and I want to give you some resources that you can utilize to review some of these things. Um, and so mindpy.com slash students uh, is a, the URL that you can visit that has links to a lot of these resources. We, we've either been showing you as the presentations on there. We also have links to our demo app um, repository, which is on GitHub on that page as well. And then there is um, more in-depth documentation there also that is linked. Um, so utilize that URL for um, obtaining a lot of information that we spoke about here. Um, if you haven't already, uh, please download the, the mobile applications. There are links on that website. You will need the mobile applications to be able to develop on Pi. Um, but for the last um, part here, I would like to um, go over the, the demo app and I'm actually gonna skip ahead a little bit. And I'm gonna talk directly about the, the demo app and I'm gonna show you um, some of the functionality of the demo app. That way you can get familiar with it. Um, so it went, like I said, you can head to the repository, which is on, linked online. Great, so I've got an instance here on my local machine of the, um, of the app code. And as you can see, I've already got it running. Um, and there's a something we call the Pi Sandbox. And you can see here the URL is I'm running this on local host. However, when I come in uh, to do anything, it's not gonna have any functionality. And that's because the application is not uh, connected to the Pi SDK. So to connect to the Pi SDK, when you're on your local machine, you need to log into the sandbox. And um, you'll be able to do this uh, from within the application. Um, you can, you'll get a URL. So the, you, this URL here points to this application. And so you can copy that out of the developer portal. And there's instructions on how to do that uh, on the, um, on, on, on the demo app uh, repository, but uh, once you copy and paste that URL that you're going to get out of the application, uh, it's going to bring you to the sign-in screen. You're then going to enter the code that's shown on this screen uh, in your um, in your Pi app, and it's going to confirm it. So give me just one moment here to type it in. And it should redirect. Excellent. So once you 